Now for the perfect way to ease yourself into the day. It's my guide to brunches. Brunch is simply a delicious combination of breakfast and lunch. And for me, it's all about getting up late and having a wonderful lazy start to the weekend with fantastic food. More exciting than breakfast and a lot more enjoyable to cook, brunch is ideal for sharing. First up, my simple and delicious frittata. Eggs are great, they are so versatile. And once you've mastered how to cook them, trust me, the door then opens to a wide range of delicious options. This is like a triple omelette, but a lot more ingredients than a normal omelette. We'll start off with some lovely smoked bacon. Slice the bacon, bacon in. No salt, a little touch of pepper. Start off on a high heat, get that bacon really nice and crispy. Otherwise, you just boil the bacon and it's got that soft, unpleasant texture in the potato. Turn down the gas and now start adding your veg. Roughly chop a red pepper and add it to the pan. The peppers and the bacon take the longest, so they've always got to go in first. Now, soak them off. And the peppers have been cooked now from that sort of rendered fat in the bacon. And then the spring onions. Just bunch them up and slice them. I want them on an angle so they come like little green diamonds. Spring onions in. Now, for the eggs. Crack in the eggs. For that size pan, seven or eight eggs. I want to fill it right to the very top. And more importantly, when I turn this out, I want it like a gatto, nice and thick, so we can slice through and see all those wonderful veg. Mm. I'm going to season the eggs with some Parmesan cheese. Be quite generous, because it adds a really nice saltiness. Fresh ground pepper, and then whisk. Whisk up those eggs nicely. Then add peas to the pan. And to give the dish a wonderful aromatic freshness, some fragrant chopped basil. I want to chop that sort of roughly, because I want to see those flecks of green going in. I want it looking charming. And how many times have you seen a, a dull omelette? Frittatas, in my mind, really help encapsulate the magic of having savoury eggs. Cooked beautifully, but with texture. Now, just before we had the eggs, I've got this beautiful little goat's cheese, and it's strong and powerful. So I want to slice it into little chunks, and then just have it dotted around. I want to discover these little pockets of creamy goat's cheese. Now, slowly add the eggs. Fill that right up. And get your spoon. Now, just let all that egg go down to the bottom. Bring it back up to the boil and sort of clean around the sides. And then some of this delicious, salty, creamy goat's cheese over the top. Now, I want it melting like a, a perfect slice of cheese on toast. Nice. Now. From there, turn the grill on for four to five minutes. Mm. Now, just looking at that, delicious. Take a little paring knife and just make sure it's released from the sides. Just take your pan. And will hopefully release the frittata from the bottom of the pan. Now, put the board over the pan. Turn that gently and just shake, say a little prayer, and lift off the pan. Beautiful. Now, from there, on. There it's there, look. Now, slice through. Mm. You can see how soft and creamy that is in the centre. 
And that goat's cheese is just melting, almost like a little sauce inside. So exciting, but more importantly, so easy to do. It's got texture, it's got creaminess, and that, for me, will beat any omelette for brunch. Served with a stack of hot buttered toast and a steaming pot of coffee, this easy frittata turns the humble egg into the perfect dish for kicking off the weekend. Eggs are really versatile, protein-packed and delicious. Here are three more of my favourite recipes to give your brunches a tasty twist. First up, North African eggs. Add olive oil to a hot pan and fry finely chopped onions and red and green peppers. Then chop garlic and chilli and cook until softened. Chilies work brilliantly with eggs, giving the dish a lovely hot kick. Next, add fresh chopped tomatoes, then cumin seeds, and fry until the seeds are fragrant and the tomatoes are lovely and soft. Season. Next, make wells in your spicy sauce and crack in your eggs. Then cover and cook on a low heat for five minutes so the whites are set and the yolks are still lovely and runny. To finish, slice spring onions and coriander and simply sprinkle over. Fresh, spicy and deliciously different. Easy North African eggs, ready in under 20 minutes. A dish worth getting up late for. Next, eggs made super indulgent for brunch. Cheat souffle with three cheeses. Mix together flour, sugar, baking powder, and season. Make a well in the center, then simply beat six eggs together. Pour into the well and whisk into the flour. Then whisk in milk, making the mixture lovely and light. Next, add the three cheeses. Cottage cheese, grated Monterey Jack or cheddar, and cream cheese. And then, for extra richness, knobs of butter. Then butter a baking dish and pour in your rich, cheesy cheats souffle mix. Now put in a medium oven and bake for 40 minutes until rich, golden, and puffed to perfection. A stunning, fuss-free souffle that's ideal for brunch. My next easy egg dish is a salty and succulent prawn and feta omelette. Pour olive oil into a hot pan, add chopped tomatoes, spring onions and fry. Season. Next, add cooked prawns and a sprinkle of chilli flakes to give it a lovely kick of heat. Cook through and set aside. Next, beat four eggs. Add olive oil to your frying pan and pour in the eggs. Sprinkle on freshly chopped oregano, which works brilliantly with eggs. Then spoon over the spicy prawns, crumble over creamy feta cheese and grill for a couple of minutes. This is eggs to the nth degree, packed with different tastes, textures and flavours. All working wonderfully together, perfect. One super versatile ingredient, three mouth-wateringly different recipes. Brunch has never been better. Nice. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First up, red pepper. As you've seen, great for frittata and North African eggs, but you need to know how to cut them properly. I absolutely love these peppers. Now, they have the most amazing, sweet, delicious flavour with a really nice, crunchy texture. And the most exciting thing about the peppers is that they're just as delicious, raw or cooked. To identify the perfect pepper, it must be smooth and firm and not a wrinkle in sight. Now, how to cut the perfect pepper. Stalk off, pepper down, and get the knife, start from the top and slice all the way round. Basically, we're going to be slicing around the seeds. 
Look, no faffing around, like this little perfect Christmas tree of seeds, and you haven't got the mess all over your board, and more importantly, it's twice as quick. Discard that. Now, we're going to cut it into a julienne. Flatten the pepper, skin side down onto the board, because it's a lot easier to slice through the pepper, and just lift the knife up and down. And basically, julienne is a chef's word for strips. These are absolutely perfect for a sautéing. And that's what we're looking for there. Crunchy, delicious, and more importantly, no seeds. Beautiful. Many great brunch recipes start with a delicious fresh egg. My tried and tested way to tell if an egg is fresh is to simply place it into a bowl of cold water. A fresh egg will sink and a stale one will float. If a small piece of shell goes into the bowl when you're cracking eggs, my tip for removing it is to simply use a larger piece to fish it out. It works like magic. For prize-winning fried eggs, fry them in oil, adding a tablespoon of water, then cover. The water steams the top of the egg to perfection. Toasty bagels are brilliant for brunch. My tip to make sure you always have them on hand is to stock up your freezer. But make sure you slice them first. That way, you can pop them straight into your toaster. This is my ultimate cookery course, a hundred recipes to stake your life on. I'm about to show you my recipe for delicious spicy pancakes. Tuck it underneath there, pull it back, and roll. But first, here's my guide to buying beautiful eggs. Knowledge is crucial. The more you know about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. In my home kitchen, I use eggs in abundance. They are so versatile, and getting to grips with them will make your cooking sing. Good girlies. Chicky chickies. With a decade of experience under her belt, Helen from Harrow's Farm in Hertfordshire is a real egghead and has some valuable tips to share. The hens we keep are designed to lay probably 300, 350 eggs a year. Free range means that the bird must have access to the outside at all times. Chickens love grass, they peck at whatever's on the ground and it makes the eggs a lovely rich golden colour and the flavour is tremendous. To tell if an egg is really fresh, crack it open, put it on a dish and you will see that it sits up really quite high and the white is really nice and tight around the side of the yolk. There's a vast range of eggs out there to experiment with. Why stick to what you know? Try livening up your brunches with something different. This is a bantam egg. They are miniature chickens. The yolks are quite large compared to the whites of the egg, and they're absolutely delicious making scrambled eggs of them because they're much more creamier um, altogether than, um, say, a chicken's egg. This is the duck's egg. These ones are sort of an off-white colour, but they can be sort of creamy, greeny colours. Compared to chicken eggs, the duck's yolk is richer and creamier, and the white is fluffier when whisked, which is why they're so incredible for baking. This is the goose egg. This is quite a large egg. It's probably equivalent to three chicken eggs. The geese literally lay for about 12 weeks. From my few geese, we've had about 120 eggs. They're amazing layers, but just for the very short season. The amazing thing is the colour of the yolks of these. They are usually quite orange. The geese don't actually eat anything other than grass. They are just grazers, and that makes a, a huge difference to the colour of the yolk. Another fantastic egg is the quail egg. Tiny, but incredibly tasty. They only take a minute to soft boil and are delicious, dipped in celery salt. If you've got a big appetite or you're making a brunch for a big group of friends, you could try the giant rea egg from South America, the equivalent of 10 hen eggs. They're great scrambled or as a massive omelette. Another interesting option is the pheasant egg, small but rich in flavour. They're perfect for homemade scotch eggs or hard boiled in a salad. You can keep eggs in your fridge um, but ideally, when you go to use them, take them out, bring them up to room temperature because you'll find that they will cook better. Just make sure that there's no cracks in them and then you'll be 
assured that they're nice, healthy, tasting eggs. Brunch should be a laid-back affair and a treat, so the dishes need to be easy to cook, but never boring. My next recipe takes the humble pancake to a whole new level of flavour and excitement. Soft, fiery and irresistible. Spicy pancakes. One of the secrets to good cooking is learning to use your imagination. When it comes to brunches, you don't have to stick to the old standbys. These delicious, spicy pancakes are a really great alternative, but more importantly, so easy to do. Start off by toasting your cumin. It's a dry roast, basically. Non-stick pan, just a touch of seasoning. The salt helps to dry out the cumin even more. And then fresh ginger. Slice them nice and thinly. Stack it back up, and then just slice. Nice little thin slices in there. And then keep that bunched up. Shake the chilli. Removing the seeds will prevent things getting too hot. Now, garlic. Nice. Now, add olive oil to your toasted cumin seeds and in with the garlic, ginger and chilli. Lovely. And it feels strange when you talk about garlic for breakfast, but the time I spent in India, everybody was eating something savoury for breakfast. It was extraordinary. Into your bowl. And set aside. Next, the pancake filling. Add olive oil to a hot pan. Mustard seeds in. Now they'll start dancing the minute they hit the pan. Mm. Then finely slice an onion. Onions in. A little teaspoon of turmeric. Sprinkle that in. And look at the colour. An instant change. Leftover potatoes. Just slice them. Smell is incredible. Potatoes in now. Spread the potatoes across the pan. I want the potatoes stained. I want them sort of absorbing all that really nice turmeric, acting like a sponge. Season those potatoes, and it really helps to bring out the spice beautifully. They're ready. Turn off the gas and let them sit there and absorb all those flavours. Back to the pancake batter. Add plain flour to your cooled garlic, chilli, ginger and cumin seeds. A touch of salt and pepper. Nothing worse than the bland pancake. One whole egg, milk. Hold the jug with one hand and whisk the other. The secret is to get that really nice smooth paste, but whisking that egg first. That brings it together. And then your milk in. Don't put all the milk in, because then you're going to get a lumpy pancake mix. And if you put less milk in, it really helps it not go lumpy. Look at that. Milk in. And the secret for me is to have a nice thin mix. Now, just a little teaspoon of oil. That helps to bring a nice crispy edge to the mixture. Now, just taste. Mm. That's the texture. Pan on. The larger the pan, the better. It helps to create the nice, thin, even surface. I want that mix going all the way around the pan. Before you put the mixture into the pan, make sure you give your pancake mix a really nice stir. Pan, it's nice and hot. Turn down the gas. A touch of olive oil in. Get that nice. Whisk with one hand. Pan to the mix. In. One and a half ladles. And then roll it around. It is really nice and thin. I want to see the ginger, the garlic. That's what I'm looking for. In there. Now back onto the heat. It only starts to remove from the bottom of the pan and lifts itself up once it's cooked. These little bubbles confirm that it's just starting to lift off the pan. A little shake. That releases it. And then just shake it to the end. And toss. If you haven't got the confidence of tossing, then use a spatula and turn it over. Now, that's exactly what I want, that nice sort of crisp 
edge around the side. The colour on the pancake is so important. Now, roll it round and just let it slide out beautifully. Mm. Now, for the exciting part, filling them. Take your potatoes, just sort of have a really nice imaginary line. And then just very carefully roll that nice and tightly. Tuck it underneath there, pull it back and roll. Beautiful. The delicious pancakes are ready to eat, but with a simple dipping sauce, they'll be a real treat. Just mix chopped coriander with natural yogurt. That's a really nice cooling agent. Sit that on the side. And that, for me, is a, a great brunch. Delicious, spicy pancakes. Amazing. Follow my ultimate cookery course, bursting with valuable lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. And you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, now it's all about outstanding brunches. I love brunch. It's a great way of relaxing with friends and family, not taking yourself or anything else too seriously. And brunch dishes should reflect that. Spicy, sweet or savoury, anything goes. And one of my all-time favourites, a dish that always creates a stir, is the daddy of all brunches, steak sandwiches. For me, the secret of a great brunch is fun and casual. Fuss-free cooking and everyone helping themselves. This is the ultimate steak sandwich. You want the Rolls Royce of beef. It has to be fillet. Now, season it beautifully. I like to open up the top of the pepper mill to increase the size of the pepper in the steak so it gives that bit of heat. Nice little chunks. You just roll now nicely all the way around. Now, slice the garlic in half. Pan nice and hot. Olive oil in. Hold the steak and just place it into the pan. Don't drop it. At the front of the pan. We're going to tilt the pan forward to cook the back of the steak, dual purpose. Now, roll it back and sear underneath. Next, my garlic. And roast that garlic. Time. Fry that time. I want to hear it. We're not looking for a lot of colour because you're going to dry out the fillet. So, just one end. Turn it back down and sear the other end in. Lift up your thyme, place it on top of the garlic. There. Lift up your fillet and sit that on top of your garlic. Butter in. Take a spoon, tilt the pan gently, lift up and baste. I've got that scented garlic thyme flavour. The steak's going to cook evenly because it's sat on a little, a little bed in the oven for eight to ten minutes. Pan on for the relish. You think of a steak sandwich, you think of a sort of nice, heated tomato relish. To make the relish, finely dice a red onion. Three-finger rule. One in front, two behind. Through and chop. Wow. Next, roughly chop a chilli, keeping the seeds in for extra heat. Start off with the olive oil into a pan. Onions, chilli. Generous with the olive oil. I want a nice sort of rich, silky relish. From there, take your tomatoes. You can just use red tomatoes, but these yellow and red make the perfect combination. Now, put your salt in, pepper, and then roast those tomatoes off. Take a wooden spoon and just sort of break them up. 
Once the skin's blister, the whole tomato just starts to release all that really nice, sweet texture. A little teaspoon of sherry vinegar. Gives that nice, acidic balance to the sweetness of the tomatoes. Turn down the gas and just let them sort of stew perfectly. Now, a steak sandwich would not be complete unless it had the most amazing mustard mayonnaise. Simply add three tablespoons of mayonnaise to three teaspoons of whole grain mustard. Now I've got the relish almost down to like a really nice jam. Now, I want to make that relish a little bit more fragrant. Some basil. Slice it through and sprinkle that basil in there. Mm. Beautiful. Look at this. There she is. My crown jewels. Time to take it out. The smell is incredible. I'm just baste one more time. Fill it. Touch is quite soft in the center, so it's just coming up to mid rare. Let it rest at the same time you cooked it. And it will be nice and pink evenly throughout the steak. To make my sandwich, I'm going to char grill some sliced jupata bread. Season it nicely. Just a little drizzle of olive oil. I want to get that bread nice and crispy. Pan, nice and hot. Bread in. Push it down. Smell is amazing, that char, sort of charcoal flavour. Once you've got those marks on the bread, it just stops the bread from becoming soggy. And look at this here. It is stunning. On. Slice it gently. One beautiful slice. Wow. It's nice and pink all the way through. And the beef is so soft. It's almost like slicing through butter. Let the knife do the work. Take a little bit of mayonnaise, spread that at the back of the spoon on both sides. Next, lettuce. Take that beautiful slice of beef. Oh, and then relish on top of that beef and just slice the sandwich in half. Mm. Beautiful. Now that's what I call a steak sandwich. Trust me, serve this sublime sandwich for brunch and you'll put a smile on everyone's face. Next up, my guide to buying the best beef and steaks. If you want the ultimate brunch, you can't do any better than start with a perfect steak. And one man who really knows his steak is master butcher Danny Lidgate. Steak is my favourite type of meat, and I think it's really good to enjoy different varieties of steak. When choosing a steak that you want, you need to look at exactly what you want out of it. For my ultimate steak sandwich, I use the fillet because it's the most tender. The fillet does the least amount of work than all the other muscles. It's tucked away in the rib cage. This means that when you find a fillet, it's incredibly soft, like butter. It's the most expensive, but you get what you pay for. There's a wide array of cuts to choose from, all different in taste and texture. If in doubt, ask your butcher. This would be the rump section, where the rump comes from, which is basically the back side. Take the bone out, and what you're left with is a wonderful steak. Rump steak, characteristically, a little bit tougher than the sirloin, or a little bit chewier than the ribeye, but a really strong flavour for the steak. Again, when buying rump, Look for the marbling. Try and get some fat covering on the steak. You can always cut it off after it's cooked. Rump's one of the best value steaks. I love it thinly cut and flash fried in stir fries or simply marinated and whacked on the barbecue. Another great value but delicious cut is the hanger steak, known as the butcher's cut because they often keep it for themselves. It's great marinated and cooked quickly. With the sirloin, which is basically the back of the animal, a nice sirloin like this, really well marbled. Don't buy too lean. So once the sirloin's trimmed up, it looks something like this. Not too much fat, but you need a little bit to cooking it. Next to the sirloin is the rib. Really popular now with ribeyes. Small, nice, 
really tender, juicy steaks. It's really, especially good for barbecuing or grilling, fantastic. Probably my favorite steak would be a ribeye. Ribeye is especially delicious because the marbling in the meat loads it with flavor. For a full-on steak experience, try the T-bone steak with a small tender fillet steak on one side of the bone and a larger flavorsome sirloin on the other. Take your butcher's advice and you won't go wrong. The final word has to go to Danny. When buying meat, knowledge really is power, so it's important to ask as many questions about the meat you're buying. Find out the breed, how it's aged, and decide exactly what you want to do each particular job. That should then give you a really amazing end product. The great thing about brunch is there are no rules. The only thing I insist on are, it's got to be fuss free, easy to cook, and so delicious, it puts you in a good mood for the rest of the day. And for me, pancakes always hit the spot. Here are three of my deliciously different recipes certified to liven up your mornings. First up, fluffy blueberry and ricotta pancakes with yogurt. Start by adding 125 grams of plain flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, then create a well in the center. Separate two eggs and add the yolks, keeping the whites for later. Beat the yolks into the flour, pouring in milk gradually to form a smooth batter. Next, fold in 125 grams of creamy ricotta cheese and 100 grams of fresh blueberries. Now whisk your egg whites until they almost reach soft peaks. Then gently fold into the pancake mix, keeping in the air to make sure the pancakes are extra light and really fluffy. Add olive oil and butter into a hot pan. Then spoon in the mix to make small pancakes, cooking until golden brown on both sides. To finish, top with Greek yogurt, fresh blueberries, and drizzle over lovely runny honey. Sweet, savory, fruity, and delicious. Made in 15 minutes, perfect brunch pancakes. My second simple pancake brunch recipe is succulent crab and mascarpone crepes. For the filling, put cooked white crab meat into a bowl. Add in mascarpone, the zest and juice of a lemon, finely chopped chives, and for a spicy hit, cayenne pepper. Stir and set aside. For the pancake batter, simply add flour, salt, an egg, and milk. Then whisk into a smooth mixture. Add oil to a hot nonstick pan. Ladle in batter to cover the bottom and swirl it around, spreading out nice and thinly. When lovely and golden, flip over. Turn out and spoon the delicious crab mix into the center of the pancake and roll. Finally, sprinkle with some chopped chives and devour. My second pancake recipe, crab and mascarpone crepes, a fantastic easy brunch cooked in minutes. When you want your pancakes sweet and zingy, this recipe is perfect. Coconut pancakes with mango and lime syrup. For the lime syrup, simply add water, cast the sugar, the zest and juice of a lime, and simmer for 10 minutes. To make the easy pancake batter, put flour, baking powder, and desiccated coconut into a bowl. Then crack in an egg. Add coconut milk and whisk into the batter until well combined. Sweeten with runny honey. Now you're ready to fry. Add melted butter to a hot pan. Place in heaped teaspoons of batter. Flip and cook until golden. For a lovely vibrant wake up, serve with sliced fresh mango and drizzle over the gorgeous citrusy syrup. Sweet, sticky and utterly irresistible. Ready in under 20 minutes, the ultimate indulgent pancakes. Fast to prepare, easy to make, Three effortless recipes guaranteed to bring some sparkle to your brunches. Incredible. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. 
I'm teaching you all about brunches, the most laid-back meal of the week. And if you want to take it easy, having the right equipment makes all the difference. Here's my guide to the best kitchen equipment. Everything you need to know about the basic kit that will get you cooking fantastic food. Chopping boards. For brunch, one of the most useful things is a great chopping board. Get the right one and it'll be your friend for life. I prefer a sort of heavy duty one because they're so much more durable. They can be flipped over the minute you want to go from vegetables to prepping fish or meat. Always keep a little jake off underneath that actually stops the board from sliding. Care for your wooden board by rubbing it with oil every so often. Any cooking oil will do. Wooden boards for me are always the best. Easy to clean and long lasting. When you do wash your wooden board, never let it stand in water or put it in the dishwasher as it may split. Buy the best you can afford and take good care of it. For brunch, I love something sweet and I've always been a fan of classic British crumpets with butter and jam. But once you try cooking them at home, you'll never want to buy them from shops again. This is another great recipe you can stake your life on. It's my homemade crumpet. Whether you're cooking for two, three, or even a gang, some of the best brunch dishes are always the simplest. These crumpets are absolutely delicious, and it's a great end to a fantastic brunch. First off, we're going to make the mix. What do you think of growing up? The smell and the taste of an amazing crumpet. It never leaves you. To make the mix, the secret is to bring the milk up to the ball, but do not boil it. The minute it boils, turn it off and let it sit there. Now, flour in. A nice pinch of salt in. Now, add half a teaspoon of bicarb. That gives it aeration and really lifts the mixture up. All those lovely little holes. A nice pinch of sugar. And then a teaspoon of yeast, dry yeast. Now, once the milk's boiled, turn it off and add some warm water. About 10 tablespoons. 150 ml. That cools down the milk, but more importantly, it doesn't destroy the yeast. Half of the milk in first, stop, and give that a really good mix. Now, the rest of it. You can just see that there's no lumps through there as it drips through the whisk. Now, we're looking for it to double in size and get nice and light. So, pop in a warm place whilst you get on with the delicious topping. Beautiful strawberries, but caramelised, almost like a very quick strawberry jam. Pan on. Just slice these in half. Some sugar, a couple of tablespoons. We're going to take the sugar to a nice light caramel. It's just starting to change colour now. Turn the gas down, and we're going to add the strawberries. Beautiful. Just sweating the strawberries down quickly, and the caramel's breaking down. And a wonderful glaze on the strawberries. Some lemon grated into the strawberries. Gives it that kind of freshness that really starts to break down the strawberries. Nice. Gas up. <laughs> Smells incredible. Some lemon juice. Touch of balsam vinegar in. That gives it that really nice, delicious tartness. Now, off it goes. As the strawberries start to cool down, it will naturally thicken and set beautifully. Nice. Now, for the crumpet. It's almost doubled in size, but be very careful you don't knock the bowl because it can sort of push out all that air. It's aerated, it's nice, it's light. Just see the texture. She's ready to go. Touch of oil in. In we go. Instead of making normal small crumpets, I'm making a giant one, ideal for sharing. Now, turn the gas down. You can just start to see a traditional crumpet style cooking process. We want those nice, tiny little holes on top and that crispy, crunchy base. Right now, 
it's time to add the butter. Just slide the butter down the back. That gives it a really nice nutty flavour at the end. Fish nice. And flip. Beautiful. Take that out. Take the jam. Spoon it over. The secret is for the juice to sort of run inside all those little holes. Think of that tartness of the balsamic vinegar. The strawberries, beautifully soft and almost pureed, wrapped in that delicious caramel. Now, finish that with a nice ball of creme fraiche. Let that sit there. And that is an amazing way of finishing off a traditional brunch with something sweet, something delicious, and something you're dying to tuck into. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. Fruit can be a great healthy option for brunch, and knowing how to get the best out of it can make all the difference. First up, how to peel and cut a mango the easy way. Holding its stalk end up, cut either side of the stone, cut all the way into the flesh, making squares without cutting through the skin. Then turn it inside out and carefully cut your pieces off. A great tip to check if a pineapple is ripe is to pull a leaf out from the top. If it comes away easily, it's ripe and ready for slicing. My tip to get the flesh out of a kiwi is to simply cut the fruit in half and scoop it out with a teaspoon. Try it, it really works. If you have fruit that's not perfectly ripe, the tip is to put a banana in a paper bag, then add your unripe fruit. Put it in a dark place and the banana will speed up the ripening process of the other fruit. You can make a great fruit puree to accompany a brunch pancake or a crumpet in a blender. To clean it afterwards, add a cup of warm water and run the machine for a few seconds. Empty out, then simply repeat with a drop of washing up liquid, then rinse. Follow my ultimate cookery course, bursting with valuable lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. <laughs>